everybody, George Donnelly here. In a recent post, I put forth the intention of replacing the nation state with a voluntary order of decentralized, client accountable organizations to provide security, dispute resolution, social safety net, and other things that today uh, governments monopolize. Now, you know, the first step when you want something is to say, hey, I want it, you know, and if you're afraid to ask the world or yourself or other people for what you want, then um, you need to find that strength. Now, uh, I'm a libertarian, a market anarchist, voluntarist, agorist, anarcho-capitalist, whatever you want to call it. We know all about the nation state and, and what it does to people and the limits that it places on people. So we talk about it every day. We analyze it in depth. So the question I have is, when are we going to do something about it? When are we going to put forth the big picture vision and make it happen? Make the um, market anarchist vision for a decentralized voluntary world. When are we going to make it happen? If we're just here to shoot the bull, exchanging ideas for philosophical fun, or to feel superior to other people, then, you know, I don't, I don't think there's really any, that's not, that's not my thing. That's not my purpose. I'm not here for that. I'm here to make a change. I'm here to improve the world and change the world. But uh, a few people have responded to my article, A Voluntary World by 2064, by saying it's folly to change the world. Yeah. And, um, you know, I understand this point of view, but let's look at their objections and let's rebut them. Objection number one, I can only change my world. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, I, I can't force other people to change. I don't have control over other people, nor should I. But I do have full control or I can develop full control over myself. But the thing is that when you change yourself, you are inevitably changing the world as well because you're a part of the world. And when you change your world, your own private individual world, well, your world is going to affect other people for good or for ill. Now, if you change your life for the better, you're going to inspire other people to do the same. Um, and... Once you have changed your world, yourself, improved yourself, realized your potential and vision or are well on the path, well, what are you going to do with that? You learn some new skills. You gain some new knowledge. Are you just going to hide that away? Because uh, there are people out there. I mean, that that's a market, uh, a valuable product or service for the market is helping other people change themselves as well. So are you going to hide it away? No. I mean, that has value. You can trade that. You can help others and thus gain for yourself as well. Now, another objection is we should just accept people for who they are. Yeah. Mm, my life is mine and your life is yours and butt out, buddy. Well, the fact is that some people are destructive assholes. Okay. And those people need an intervention. They need to be checked before they contradict themselves by forcibly changing someone, other, someone else's life for the worse. Other people are crying out for help. People who would love to have training in how to start their own business and how to have more self-discipline and how to be more efficient and how to develop a life plan. Are you just going to ignore those people? Others say we need only change our thoughts and accommodate ourselves to the world and something will, will magically happen or we'll just be happier about the things that are wrong. This is kind of a Zen state of mind. Um, it's very passive. Okay. And passivity is not a solution to anything really. 
It's, it's, it's not going to get us anywhere. And when you have uh, the nation state's drones killing children, when the IRS comes to take uh, seize your cash or take uh, your family business, or when uh, your, the government is taking a third of your earnings, your income, and you're struggling to make ends meet, and you can barely afford health insurance, and, and you have children, and, you know, I could go on and on. You know, the, being passive is not helping with any of that. Another objection is that it's arrogant to change the world. You know, uh, just mind your own business. Stick to your thing, you know. Uh, but I have to ask, was the invention of the telegraph arrogant? Was the discovery of electricity? What about the the airplane and daily flights all over the globe? Was that arrogant? Or was that helpful? Was that a service? Really, all this objection is, is somebody who is, is negative. Who doesn't think it can be done. Who has been perhaps cowed by negative people into thinking that they can't do great things. But the fact is that you can. And given what we libertarians, marked anarchists know about the evils of the nation state and about the power of liberating people from each other so that each person can live their own life as they see fit, then really it's a disservice to not take these ideas to people who could use them. And no one is forcing anything on anyone. When we take these ideas to people, they can accept them or not. I want to work with the people who accept them. Together we'll build something that will really serve as an argument that cannot be rebutted about how awesome the power of liberty is. New technologies will change the world automagically without any of us ever having to lift a finger. Yeah? So this objection says that due to you know, X, Y, or Z new technology, the nation state will automatically become obsolete and you know, they'll just, uh, you know, the DEA will hand in its guns and, uh, and uh, the president will uh, you know, shutter the White House and Congress will go and find productive jobs, you know. And uh, we, we just don't have to worry about it. It'll happen all by itself, yeah? So th this objection suffers what I, from what I call invisible hand syndrome. This is the idea that just by introducing, just through the action of regular people doing things that, that you want them to do, that you think are good, they may disagree, that somehow all these actions are going to add up to an end result that really nobody else but you or a few others expect. Yeah? You know, if you ask a, a reporter, a politician, a CEO, uh, a regular person on the street, a bus driver, you know, in, in 30 years, is, the, is government going to be obsolete? Well, no, no. None of them expect that. None of them you know, you, why, why would you expect it? Because you're so deep into libertarianism that you, that's the context, that's the lens through which you see the world. That's the end result you want. So it's, it's, it's a bias. It's a form of bias. Now this invisible hand syndrome also uh, downplays uh, agency, human agency. The fact is that changes don't happen on their own, especially political changes. Now, I might change my browser just because they put a better one out on the market. I might um, buy an, uh, a new car just because they put out an, a new car or a better car. But political change doesn't operate by the rules of the marketplace because politics is about 
aggression, first use of force, whereas the marketplace operates based more on the principles of liberty and voluntarism. Political change requires leadership. It requires a vision. It requires consistency over an extended period of time. Your faith in technology, you know, let's, let's keep in mind, the most powerful technology is a single human mind. There is no technology more powerful than that because all technology that we have arises from it. And they have yet to build a computer more powerful than a human mind. Sure, there are computers that can um, uh, do math faster than most people. And probably all people that can play chess better. But the, we don't even understand the, the complexities of the human mind. There's, there's no AI that, can, that is like us. Therefore, we, our minds are still the most powerful technology. And it's stubborn. The human mind doesn't change easily. This is why we need to take, we need to have a plan, we need to have a vision, we need to have leadership, not, not just one leader. Everybody needs to be leaders. Everybody needs to be taking forward action, initiating all the time towards the long-term goal, towards the short-term goals that get us there. Because this is really just another, another passivity, another uh, call to be passive, to wait and see. And uh, libertarians have been waiting and seeing for a long time. And uh, I don't think the wait and see crowd has achieved anything. It's only been the crowd that has stepped up and said, let's do something that has achieved something. Another objection is that evil destroys itself. So we need not lift a finger against the nation state. In fact, if we do fight evil, that negative energy only makes evil stronger. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree, but the problem is that today we have hundreds of millions of otherwise good people supporting the evil, okay? That's a more powerful force. That, that's, that's not going to destroy itself. Because as I argued in, in my original piece, you know, even if the nation state everywhere collapsed at the same time or in or in short order, one after the other. People don't know any better. They want to know where's their Medicaid coming from? Uh, where's my food stamps, my unemployment benefits? Uh, I support the troops. We got to have strong cops, law and order. Um, you know, where do I send my tax check? Okay. They're just going to recreate another government. There's something more that needs to be input here. Because so many good people, through their hard work, their good actions every day in producing, because producing is good, are supporting nation states, basically evil nation states. Another objection, focusing so big on such a big goal means that your efforts will be wasted, distracted, too far spread out, and therefore you'll achieve nothing. Now, in the short term, this is wise advice. If you want to uh, achieve a specific goal, if you want to achieve a goal, you got to make it specific. However, over the long term, what are those short term goals adding up to? Maybe this week you got more work done than last week. But so what? Did you earn more money? Is it building a stronger business for you that you own, not that somebody else owns? Is it, do you have a long-term vision for your life? And is it helping, is it getting you closer to that? Significantly closer? What is a big goal other than a collection of small goals, each one a step that takes you in the same direction? in the direction towards your big goal, not unlike the chapters in a novel or the courses in a college education. So if you look at a big goal and you say, oh my God, that's just too big, I just can't do. 
Well, then you break it up into manageable steps. You don't abandon the big goal. You know, it's like saying, oh my God, I have a hundred years of life ahead of me. That's too much. What do I do? You know, I'm just going to sit down on the couch, grab a beer and watch The Simpsons. You know, no, you t- <laughs> no, no, that's not a healthy response. The healthy response is to say, well, where do I want to get to? Where do I want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in 10 years? Where do I want to be in 25 years? Where do I want to be at the end of my life? Uh, assuming that we have an extended life by that time. Um, and, um, you know, what kind of legacy do I want to leave? You know, what, 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 what message do I want to send with my life? You know? And so you build that life plan step by step. And you may have plans for this week. You may have plans for this month. You may have plans for this afternoon. You may have plans for the next five years. But if they're not adding up to something, to serving your long-term goal, then you have to ask yourself, is this really what I want to be doing? But you don't abandon the long-term goal. It's just too hard. I just can't. I can't imagine it, yeah? Well, that, that's a problem of vision. That's a challenge of vision that needs to be uh, handled. You know, it's a little bit ridiculous in a world where we have a, a space station, where we have self-driving electric sports cars, a world where there are multiple groups of people uh, planning, how, you know, making plans to colonize Mars, a world where we have the um, the collected knowledge of humanity at our fingertips at any moment, you know, milliseconds away. It's a little bit ridiculous having all of that to say that anything is too hard. It's not. It's not too hard. The question is, how much is it worth to you? What? How much time and energy and, of, and how much of your own pride are you willing to risk to achieve the goal? Change yourself or change the world. It's a false dichotomy. Why not both? In fact, changing yourself is the first step towards changing the world. Because as I said before, when you change your world, you're changing the whole world too. And that's a process that can become self-sustaining, viral, as you inspire someone you mentor someone, you help someone, and then they help even more people. That's a process that can grow quite, uh, that can grow exponentially until we have changed the world and in a big way. And we did it in alignment with uh, libertarian principles in a voluntary, decentralized manner where we helped individuals. Build better lives in the process. So the question is, are you in or what? Sometimes it takes a big goal to focus people's energies on something that we've all talked about for decades. This is the big goal, a voluntary world by 2064. Let's make it happen. Let's make the plan. Let's talk about the objections. Let's, let's adjust the, pl- the, uh, the, we can adjust the goal. We can, um, focus it. We can make it better. And let's make the plans. Let's get started moving. Now we could create a subreddit to talk about this, but given that, uh, steam is the new, uh, blockchain based social media, uh, network, kind of like medium, a blogging platform, let's use a steam tag. Uh, voluntary world 60, 2064, all one word. Open an account on Steam. Uh, post with that tag, voluntary world 2064, all one word. Follow me. Let me know about your post. I'll upvote you. I'll comment. And, uh, and I'll follow you, of course. And then we can get a conversation going. We can change the world. It's not folly to talk about it.